Forewarned is forearmed. Uh, to be prepared is half the victory. Or so said Don Quixote in the eponymous novel of 1615. Um, the Bureau of Meteorology has for 100 years um, been in the business of helping Australians prepare plans and responses to weather and climate. And uh, I guess we've seen that as doing our bit to pave our half of that path to victory. Um, increasingly, we're interested in seeing how we can share in paving that whole path to victory. So please let me explain. Uh, the, the Bureau has four major classes of products and service. I'll just quickly whip you through those. So the first of those is historical. Basically, if it's recorded or forecast, it's summarised and kept so that you can access it. So there's an enormous repository of, of data and insight that's critical for understanding the past. And that's essential to developing strategies for managing the future, uh, particularly risk, including things like insurance products uh, that we heard about earlier today. A second class of um, products and service that the Bureau offers is it's what we call now casts. So an enormous amount of data uh, that's produced every second and updated and made available in roughly 10 minute increments. And that enables tactical responses to things uh, like taking in $100 worth of washing before it gets wet, to the application of tens of thousand dollars worth of chemicals or harvesting of millions of dollars worth of crops. also in the business of forecasting. <clears throat> now, bureau speak, that's saying what's going to happen in roughly between now and the end of the week. Yep, so it goes out seven days. A uh, whole range of forecast products there. They're actually produced on a grid across all of Australia that's six by six kilometres squared, and they're done in three hour increments going out for a week. So that's over actually around 12 million forecasts a week that the Bureau produces and you can access on the Bureau website or, or the app and other, other places. The Bureau also offers Outlook products or things that look from a month to three months out. Rainfall and temperature, a whole lot of climate drivers, etc. So it's all about peering into the fog of the future to help people narrow the range of possibilities with which they might have to deal. So all of those services are being continuously improved uh, through more observations, uh, better models and more computing power. And that means that information about the past, the present and the future is actually being made available um, in much more spatially and temporary, uh, temporally resolved um, manner. And the forecasts and outlooks are becoming even more accurate over longer time frames and better targeted to the place that matters most to most users, that is their backyard. And a lot of that work, uh, it's done by Bureau people, but also in partnership with others and often enabled um, by the Bureau's customers or their agents, uh, people like Department of Ag and Water Resources, uh, Meat and Livestock Australia, GRDC, etc., all of whom fund improvements in underlying capacity to forecast future weather and climate. Now, all of that better information um, is going to come to you via the usual delivery channels. And that's all based on, a, on an old delivery model whereby the Bureau knows best and owns the models, the channels by which the data gets out to you. Like the Royal Mail, uh, that's a delivery model that's unlikely to meet all needs uh, or to meet them well enough uh, or to actually survive as a sole supplier. 
So there's delivery options that can complement and supplement existing Bureau of Meteorology delivery model. Um, just like the emergence of cheap air transport, um, those delivery models have the potential to create value by bringing new players into the market and leveraging their capacity to create and exploit new niches. So I'll just give you a quick whip through how we think uh, the, the Bureau of Meteorology can help foster the conditions in which new players can enter the market in weather and climate. And we call the means by which they do this the Six Commandments. <clears throat> um, and according to recent social research on the Ten Commandments, uh, six is possibly all you need. So what are they? What's the Bureau going to do? Um, we're going to shift our focus from the public to the private sector. <clears throat> because that's where value is created in the agricultural value chain. We're going to take the broadest view of the agricultural value chain and the sectors that serve it, um, because joined up solutions um, can open new value pathways. And often when people think about the agricultural sector and they think about the impacts of weather and climate, they think about farms. Worth remembering that there's $40 spent on services for every $100 of farm gate value that's created. So the ag sector is much broader and deeper than farming itself. The Bureau is going to increase its focus on the 20% of players in the sector who create and control 80% of the value because that's the most efficient and effective pathway to impact. Don't get the idea that we're going to ignore the 80% of players who create 20% of value. Um, they'll retain undiminished access um, to the continually improving public offer of the Bureau and others. The next three, I think, are the most important of the six commandments. Um, we're not going to assume that the Bureau is best placed to develop or deliver industry solutions that involve weather and climate. Because we recognise that we're a minority player in the vast agricultural knowledge ecosystem in Australia. There's plenty of people out there with fresh ideas and mature delivery pathways. In accordance with that, the Bureau is going to actively seek partners to add value to existing and new Bureau products and services. Yeah, because we recognise that value is added by others who are much closer to the market than we are. And finally, we're going to actively enable third parties to develop weather and climate products for the ag sector because that'll increase the penetration of products and services into the sector. So people who want to create weather apps, and consulting services based on weather, we don't see as competitors, we see as pathway to market for weather and climate stuff. And just to reassure you, um, this isn't some thought bubble um, that's popped into my head. This is actually a deep part of the Bureau of Meteorology strategy, um, which seeks to create impact and value uh, for the Australian community by creating products and services that benefit the Australian community, drive competitive advantage for businesses and industries, by hook or by crook. So it's our job to help you do yours, uh, not our job um, to replace what you do. So thank you.